but uh, we're also going to talk about another thermodynamic quantity that is called entropy. And it turns out that entropy and enthalpy are playing kind of a tug of war. And their relationship with each other is literally what causes something to be what we call thermodynamically favored or not. Okay? And so if you're a chemist, what would you like to know? You would like to know whether products are favored right, or not. That would be one thing that you would be very interested in. And so when we study thermodynamics, we're going to study the relationship between heat and other forms of energy and how they make chemical and physical processes occur. Now, just one brief thing, and my movies aren't working, so I'm sorry. I don't know why they're not working. How to predict if a reaction can occur given enough time. So thermodynamics can only tell us is a reaction spontaneously favored or thermodynamically favored? We say either that a reaction is spontaneous or we say that it is thermodynamically favored. Now, one example is that if you have graphite and you do the thermodynamics for graphite, graphite being what's in your pencils, it's not very exciting, you can go to Giant and buy it, that graphite is a form of carbon. Diamonds are also a form of carbon. In our Chem 101 class, uh, we do a Lewis Structure Lab where we look at the Lewis Structure, 3D structure for graphite, which is actually in layers, and we do look at the 3D structure for diamond, which is three-dimensional, okay? Now, if you look at the, the thermodynamics for graphite becoming diamonds, that is thermodynamically, I mean, excuse me, the other way around. Diamonds becoming graphite, okay? So that would be a big scare, right? Who wants their diamond becoming graphite? Nobody does. So it's thermodynamically favored, but it happens very, 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 very slowly. So nobody is worried about their diamonds, okay? So all thermodynamics can tell us is whether something is Favor, not whether it happens at a reasonable rate. I'll give another example. Yes, go ahead. So, how does, is it just over time if you let a diamond really If you could let a, if you could watch a diamond for a billion years, you might observe some graphite form. Okay, and when we get to kinetics, we'll talk about something that's called the activation energy. If some of you can recall any previous chemistry class you've taken, you may have talked about activation energy. There's a hill that molecules have to climb before they can even react. And if it's really, really high, even if a reaction is thermodynamically favored, they still have to get up and over that hill. And it's no bueno if it's really, really, really tall. Isn't it with graphite over a billion years, it would just turn to diamonds again? Well, no, because that part of it isn't thermodynamically favored. It's okay. the diamond to graphite that's thermodynamically favored. But nobody's worried about their diamonds because it's, uh, so if you calculate the thermodynamics, it's favored, it's just a t it's not done in a reasonable amount of time, okay? So um, the other thing is, um, think about a brand new car, right? Okay, so rusting, metals rust, right? They corrode, um, car parts are made from less and less and less steel and chrome and stuff like that, and more and more out of really super fancy plastics. But everybody understands that metals undergo corrosion for specifically for iron that's called rust, okay? And so that process is also favored, but the good thing for us as well is that it happens very, very, very slowly. It will happen over like you know, 10 years or 20 years so we can observe it more. So that may even be a better example. So there are questions that thermodynamics can answer and questions that it can't answer, there are questions that we're going to study kinetics. Kinetics can answer and questions that it can't. Yes? Did you say it was favored to go from diamond to graphite? I did. And I. Sense, you mean because you don't observe it? Yeah. The reason why you don't observe it is because it takes thousands of years. Well, my whole point, Lisa, is <laughs> that thermodynamics can only answer so many questions. So you can do the math, right, and show that the conversion of diamond to graphite has a negative delta H and a positive entropy, which we're going to talk about, and that it will happen 
but it doesn't, right? Why? Because it takes so long, okay? So I'm only presenting this now because students tend to get thermodynamics and kinetics and the answer and the material that you can use to answer these questions, they get them confused, okay? All right, so not to make a, too huge of a deal out of it, I just think that's kind of interesting. I realize I'm a very unusual person. So, laws of thermodynamics. This is kind of review. The first law, the change in internal energy is equal to the heat transferred to the system plus work done on the system. We're almost never gonna use this. This is sort of the official definition of the first law of thermodynamics. Fortunately for us, at this point in your career, we mainly just um, say, okay, we're gonna just work at constant temperature, constant pressure. It makes our life easier. If you've taken, ever taken a physics class where you've done adiabatic expansion, uh, pressure and temperature don't stay constant, and so then you do have to take into account the system and the work done on the system. So you've probably heard this in a much more user-friendly definition as energy is neither created nor destroyed, okay? Internal energy is the sum of the kinetic and potential energies of the system. This is true whether you're studying um, kinetic energy and potential energy in a physics context or whether you're studying it in a chemistry context. In a chemistry context, kinetic energy is the energy of motion and the things that are in motion are electrons and molecules, gas particles, anything that's moving around. Potential energy results from chemical bonding of atoms and molecular attractions. There's no definition for potential energy. Potential energy is energy that could be used if you could get to it somehow, right? So. If you guys drive home and you find out that you need gasoline, we say that that gasoline has potential energy in the bonds. What has to happen before your car can utilize it? Those bonds have to break. They reform new molecules and energy is given off, all right? <coughs> the internal energy depends on the temperature and pressure. We've already said that. Um, again, this is not quite as important because eventually we're going to assume that temperature and pressure are constant. But it is important that you realize that we're taking a tiny little corner of this whole energy study to focus on because uh, if you, you don't have to assume that temperature and pressure are constant. They can be changeable. And then this is how, way up here, we said the change in internal energy is equal to the heat transfer to the system plus the work done on the system. And here's how we would say it in a chemical equation. The change in energy is equal to the heat transfer to the system plus the work done on the system, all right? Now, if you remember from your study of energy previously, we, it's sometimes confusing to students because there is a unit for Q, or a variable for, Q, for energy, and then there's something that is all of a sudden called enthalpy, okay, and it has a different unit, 